I've only got nine and a half minutes, I'm told, which is kind of tough to talk about a three and a half billion dollar company in that amount of time. But nevertheless, we'll talk about silver a little bit. Um, the most important number on this slide is the seven to one number on the bottom. As a mining industry, for every one ounce of gold being mined worldwide, only seven ounces of silver is being mined. You see silver production peaked in 2016 at 880 million ounces annually. Uh, it's last year, 2020, we're down at about 740 million ounces. Uh, we're expecting 2021 might be a little bit of an improvement. We're expecting to see it closer to 800 million ounces. But nevertheless, we're consuming over 1 billion ounces of silver annually. And we're in deficits and have been in deficits for over a decade. And it's getting to be a pretty critical situation. It hasn't shown up in price really to any great degree. Um, when I put the company together back in 2002, silver was trading at $5. It's $25 today, so it's not that bad. But it's the only metal that has not achieved its all-time high, which was, uh, which was reached back in 1980 at $50. In 2011, it just touched 10, 10 or 20 cents below 50. I think the high that night was 49.80. So what's driving demand? Well, electric, you know, everything we do as a human race requires silver. We wouldn't be here today without silver. Your home would not operate. None of the gadgets that you take for granted would, would not operate. Electric cars, relatively new industry. Um, it last, uh, well, the last uh, number uh, at, uh, is public. Now, this, these are estimates, but 2019, we... Uh, the human race produced 95 million automobiles. Uh, there are 1.4 billion automobiles sitting on the surface today. In 2019, the electric car industry produced 5 million automobiles of the 95 million produced uh, worldwide. We consumed around 60 million ounces of silver to, to build those 5 million electric cars. Now, you heard in the earlier presentation about you know, some governments wanting to take fuel combustion cars off the roads by 2030. Um, it's not going to happen, quite honestly. It's impossible. Uh, the miners do not have enough silver to mine. There's not enough copper to also accomplish that. They're, these governments are you know, really, it's a fantasy. Uh, to change the electric grid the way they're discussing is a 50-year, even possibly longer, process. It's not going to take a decade. Uh, cell, cellular uh, 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 solar panels, sorry. Um, the, I just read an article yesterday written by someone here in London, actually. Uh, it showed up on Kitco. Um, they, this fellow was saying that this industry is going to consume 140 million ounces of silver in 2022. You know, compared to the 100 million ounces that it shows on this slide at, you know, in, in 2020. That's a lot of silver. You know, in an 800 million silver market, you know, one industry is going to take 100 million or 140 million of that. You've got then electric cars growing um, as much as they are, another 100 million ounces there. You've got two industries that are basically consuming north of 20% of the world's supply of silver. Now, talking a little bit about uh, First Majestic, uh, we are the purest silver company in the world of the majors. There are smaller companies that are purer than us, but um, from the group of the majors, uh, we are. 55% 55, 55 of our revenues from the sale of silver. Our assets are spread throughout Mexico, and we've got a, a nice new asset in Nevada, which uh, we're not really going to talk too much about today because I don't have enough time. But we've got large land packages throughout both countries. Or, um, and uh, there we've got, well, there's another slide coming up. I'll talk about that in a sec. So these are the assets, uh, the Mexican assets. All those red dots are producing mines, um, the three mines in Mexico. Uh, one is 100% um, silver, which is the th number three dot. Um, oh, thanks. Appreciate that. And the number one is 50% um, silver, 50% gold. Number two dot is um, also 50-50. And then the, the number four in, in Nevada is 100% gold. The nice thing that differentiates First Majestic is that we're 100% Dory producer. We're, we don't produce concentrates of any kind. We did have concentrate mines up until 
uh, 2020, or pardon me, 2018, uh, we, and we shut the last one down in 2018. There's just very little money in lead and zinc. Um, all the money's in the silver, basically, and of course the gold. This is our production. We were expecting to see a record 2020, but unfortunately due to COVID, we had to shut some of the operations down, as many of you probably know. So we had a bit of a setback. But 2021 is looking like a fantastic year for us. Um, you know, 25 million silver equivalent ounces, um, of which, as I said, you know, 55% of that silver and the rest is the gold. And 2022 is going to be another uh, bang up year for us. Our exploration program, we've got 27 rigs active throughout our portfolio, drilling you know, almost 300,000 um, 300, uh, meters of drilling, largest drill program ever in the company's history. And you see on the gray bar on the bottom there, the grades are going up. So not only are the reserves going up, but the grades are going up as well, which is pretty fantastic. Uh, you don't see that very often. And, you know, talking about ESG, uh, we converted over our last uh, mine, which was on diesel, uh, to LNG just recently, actually in April of this year. Uh, we converted over um, another mine called Lincoln Tata about five years ago from diesel to LNG as well. And it worked out so well for us, we decided to, to do the same thing for the Santa Elena operation. Now we're using very little diesel, you know, compared to history. Um, the, uh, uh, the dam, uh, this is picking up the, uh, the summer period. So the, the uh, hydro, you'll see increase for the balance of the year because of course it's rainy season right now in Mexico. So that particular mine, the San Dimas mine, is basically getting 100% of its power from hydro. Uh, but in the summer months when it's drier, we usually have to rely on diesel. We're actually looking at um, um, hydrogen right now. Uh, there's a Canadian company that's uh, building hydrogen, uh, mini hydrogen plants. And we're looking at it to possibly replace diesel at some of our operations. And that's the LNG plant, which we're now up and running. It's uh, operating at about, as it says, you know, 12 uh, megawatts there, supplying 90 some odd percent of the energy needs of that operation. It's a pretty big facility. And the market cap at First Majestic, as I said, is about three and a half billion. Uh, balance sheet is cleaner, better than it's ever been in the company's history. Uh, breakdown of the shareholders there. And going to the sector, you know, this is what the sector looks like. Uh, the many of these companies that you would normally think as silver companies are, in fact, you know, gold companies or base metal companies. Hecla produces a lot of zinc. Um, and you see the percentages, you know, Pan American's down at 28% of the revenue from the sale of silver. It's tough being a silver company. Silver mines are very, very rare. They're hard to come by. Um, and lots of cases, they're, they're in Latin America. And with Latin America looking the way it's looking these days with, you know, in, in Argentina and um, Peru falling to pieces, uh, no one really wants to go there and invest in these mines. Uh, uh, mind you, they're base metal mines. You know, most of them are lead and zinc mines with silver credits, but there's just no investment going on in Latin America right now. So I don't see this changing. I don't see any big silver mines coming online. Um, and, and we're just, you know, this, the, the, the supply is dropping, as you saw from that previous uh, uh, slide, and demand is increasing at about, you know, 5 to 6% annually. And we started a dividend this year as well. It's a modest dividend, uh, not huge yet. I hope to increase this in 2022. Um, I'd like to get it up to about 2% of co uh, corporate revenues. That's the, that's the objective. Uh, so watch for that news if, in fact, we are able to pull that off. And that's the end of my presentation.